The New York Jets have acquired Hassan Reddick from the Philadelphia Eagles after letting Bryce Huff walk to the same team. And it's just me, so I don't know why I have my headphones in tonight. What's going on, guys? Did the Jets make a mistake? No, of course not. <laughs> I'll make let's make the, the 15 second version is the Jets got a crap ton better at football by adding Hassan Reddick, one of the most productive pass rushers of the last four seasons, filled, which was what at the time a significant eat on their roster. And they've had an awesome free agency. And this is undeniably a one of the eight most talented rosters on paper in the NFL. There's the short version. But um, yeah, let's talk about the resource allocation stuff between you know Reddick, Huff, Will McDonald, all that. Because I think most Jeff fans, we you know, you're following the the team day to day, we kind of understand some of this stuff. So I'll probably be preaching to the choir here. I know 90% of us are super stoked that Hassan Reddick is a New York Jet for obvious reasons. But, you know, I was cutting it up with some non Jet fan football people I respect on the internet. And I'm not, I'm, I don't know what Stephen A. Smith or Colin Cowherd said. I don't care about that. But like actual people who typically know football, like uh, I was talking to Marcus Whitman of that franchise guy, probably best like independent football content on YouTube, in, in my opinion. Really good dude too. Learned a lot about draft prospects uh, from him, but uh, he we were going back and forth. He was just ripping the Jets for how they've handled like Huff and McDonald, and then get, and then getting Reddick. I was like a waste of all these resources, and I'm like, all right, let me compile my thoughts <laughs> into a stream because I don't think it's that simple. Now, if you're at, if you're asking me straight up in a vacuum, would I have rather had Bryce Huff? Uh, Age is what 26, 27, 28 season for the Philly deal, which people say, Oh, 50 million. It's like, dude, look at the contract. I know they got void years till forever. That's kind of how they do business in Philly, but he doesn't have a cap hit of over 11 million in the first three years. Then there's a $27 million option. He's never going to see that money. They're either going to cut him or extend him and chop that up. So it's a pretty inexpensive cap friendly deal for Huff. So would I rather have that or would I rather have, I don't know, age 30 plus Hassan Reddick plus like a day uh, to future pick. Um, It's close. I don't, I think I still might lean Reddick. Look guys, you know how much I love Bryce Huff. Okay. I am a, I probably think Bryce Huff is better than the majority of you because most of the time I, I'm, interacting with Jeff fans about Bryce Huff. It's like shaking them and, and telling them this dude is good. The Jets haven't had a pass rusher get 10 plus X in 70 pressures ever since John Abraham. Okay. But Hassan Reddick has been one of the best sack artists in the league the past four years. And we know he can play on early downs better than Huff. We know he is an adequate enough run defender that you're going to, you can put him out there 70 plus percent of the snaps. If you, if you want to now, if you let's say you might lean Huff in that situation because you're projecting what they what they can do. You don't pay guys based on their resume. Obviously, Huff's resume versus Reddick's resume is not a discussion. Okay, uh, Reddick has done all kinds of things in this league. Huff has never dreamed of yet. But you pay guys anticipating what they can do. And obviously, Philly is making the bet. Hey, we like 26, 27, 28 year old Bryce Huff over um, over 30 year old Hassan Reddick. Now, I think it's going to be close. It's be really interesting to watch our production compared to each other over the next few years. But you know what? There's a there's a good chance that the New York Jets would have preferred Huff too. They just realized it too late. You know, my completely unsourced, no no thirty sources here. My guess on the Jets with the Huff situation is something like this. Um, he comes, he's a UDFA. Obviously, they see something like him. They give him a shot. They do their part in developing him. He works his ass off. Um, twenty twenty two. He proves he is at the very least a good, pure, like third down, passing down rusher only. He played like 20% of the snaps and on a snap per snap basis, he was crushing it. And he probably wants to play more. And the Jets probably think, look, man, there's going to be diminishing returns if you play more. We're not sure about the run defense. That's probably their logic. All right. And this continues up until the 2023 preseason where he's out there in the fourth quarter, you know, with the Jabrones. With the guys, with the guys fighting for a roster spot, then he's liking tweets about why is he out there. He's liking tweets about man, this guy could be a stud if they just give him a bigger role. 
And if you follow what, what the athlete said, what Huff, everything that came out of Huff's mouth or the stuff he put on social media or liked on social media, oh, you always got the vibe from him. This team doesn't see I have another level to my game. That's not me saying that, although I did. Okay. That's not me. Oh, you don't you don't know better than the coaches. That's fine. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying from Bryce Huff's perspective, obviously he felt some type of way. And then they um they give him that bump that after the first month of the season, they're playing him same 20% of snaps. Then they say, you know what? The best pass rusher on our team, we're gonna do something crazy. Let's play him more. Plays 52% of the snaps. Um same level of JFM, who the Jets had no problem cutting $14 million to. So at that moment, pretty short into that experiment, probably like by the second quarter of the Chiefs game when he was the best player on the field um, in that game, not no exaggeration, go rewatch that game, tell me who played better. Uh, they were like, oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. This guy could be, you can call him situational, you can call him third down. End of the day, he he should be a staple in a pass rush that could play up to 60% of the snaps, no sweat. It, was, it wasn't it was even that far of a stretch from what he was playing last year. Actually, if the Jets didn't have like the second most time trailing last year, he probably would have played 60% of the snap post Robert Sala realizing he's good, right? But at that point, the Jets probably like, all right, well, I mean, we should pay this dude. At that point, I think it was too late for Huff. He's like, I don't believe you. I don't believe you because you've you've been one. You've seen, you've seen it a day late and a dollar short as opposed to everybody else with eyes, right? So he's like, yeah, I'm just going to go somewhere else. Philly is offering me uh, a better sales pitch in my role with the team. So I don't, th I think the Jets made the, the Jets made the mistake. The, the Jets mistake with Huff was not extending him last year and taking that first round pick and spending on a wide receiver. Is that even an, is that even a take? Like if we could go back, we would all do that. We'll talk about Will McDonald in a second, obviously. But I, I think people are acting like at this point, like a month ago, the Jets said, "You know what, Bryce? We think you're we think you're trash. We we think you're replaceable. We're just going to let you walk." No, I think they just realized it too late. And sometimes when you pay a guy early, it works out. Sometimes when you want to wait for a more proven sample size, and then you miss out. It is what it is. Now that being said, once Bryce Huff is in Philly, okay, that's done. Now it's a completely separate situation. Now enter Hassan Reddick. So now I'm not comparing Hassan Reddick to Bryce Huff. And even if you are, Hassan Reddick is, is better right now. We'll see how he ages and, and how Bryce Huff improves, but Hassan Reddick better right now. Um, now you're comparing Hassan Reddick to the edge edges on your team, to the edges on the market. So anybody struggling with, with this, are, are we? is anyone seriously saying that the Jets shouldn't have acquired Hassan Reddick because they need to go let Michael Clemens cook or let Bradley and I, Bradley and I season? No. The Jets went and got a dude for a... For a 2026 there won't even be internet or football or pensions or money in 2026 for all we know who cares and the the thing i like about this business and i'm going all out of order with my notes this is going to be like a very probably way too many words for not a very complicated issue but i like to try and cover every aspect of something so that way i can because instead of going back and forth in the comments with people if i'm if i mistake or if i leave something out I like to address every <laughs> every issue because you know Jet fans are thorough and they'll they'll point it out if I miss something. But what I like about the Reddick deal, I think I'm leaning towards this possibly being a rental of Hassan Reddick. That because that lines up with the Jets giving up that 2026 pick. Because now if the Jets rent Hassan Reddick, right? So basically a one year, fourteen million dollar deal. That's for the, uh, he would get more on the open market, I would imagine, Hassan Reddick. So that's fine. Then he is going to leave. Let's say he leaves after this Jets season, and then he goes sign somewhere. Then the Jets got like maybe a third or fourth round comp pick, and the pick that they're going to give up in 2026 is a second or third rounder. So they're going to give up a second or third rounder, but get back a third or fourth rounder. So the way I'm looking at it is the Jets rented. This is my theory. The Jets rented Hassan Reddick for 2024 in an all-in year for a pick swap two years from now and $14 million. I I got no problem with that. I got no problem with that at all, at all. In fact, if the, the best of both of those worlds combined, if 
Hassan Reddick doesn't get this second round pick, um, which he has to get 10 sacks. And I think it's 67% of the snaps. I think he'll get 10 sacks. I don't know if he'll get 60% of the snaps. And the thing is, if we're up, if we're blowing people out, Hassan, come on over, sit on the bench, buddy. We're going to let, and it's, he won't, he won't care a ton because it's not tied to his money. It's not like he has a sack in, or a playing time incentive in his contract where you're playing with his money. He doesn't care about the Eagles pick. So he can drink some Gatorade and we'll make sure that's, that's a, um, a third round pick. And maybe the comp pick is a third rounder. So, so maybe you're literally just moving back a little bit in the third round, two years from now to rent one of the most productive pass rushers of the last four years, who's just going to turn 30 at the start of the year, who's been incredibly durable. Look, man, right now we're just, we're just saying, do I like the bet? You know, Hassan Reddick could fall off of a cliff and forget how to play football, right? And it'll end up being a bad deal. But I, I like the bet that they made with Hassan Reddick. I think they got better, at least in year one. You know, if it's a three year, if it's a three year extension, maybe in 2026, you know, Bryce Huff at age 28 is better than Hassan Reddick at age 33 or whatever. But I think for 2024, they, I, and I love Bryce Huff. I'm just having a hard time making a case that Bryce Huff is better to F football than Hassan Reddick. I really am. Okay. Um, because we're projecting. I don't know if Bryce Huff actually, in fact, what we do know is I've made the case that Bryce Huff is not as a below average run defender. But I think the trade off of his pass rush is worth him being on the field more. But with Hassan Reddick, we've seen like that's my hypothesis on Bryce Huff. Hassan Reddick, there's no hypothesizing. It is what it is. Like he's what he's Bryce Huff's ceiling right now. All right. So what the heck? That that's that's Huff and um Reddick. Now, Will McDonald. This one, I'm having a harder time making a case that the Jets necessarily did the prudent um thing. Now, here I will put a billion caveats into this. If you've been around the channel, you know I I love Will McDonald, the prospect. I watched every single snap of his last two years. He is by far the most I've watched of any collegiate prospect ever. I love his game. He's he's going to be an effective pass rusher in the NFL. He His tools, his length, and his athleticism are too good for him to completely suck at football. It won't happen. He's going to be some type of player. Okay, Was he worth the 15th overall pick for the Jets? I have I have some doubts, to be honest. It doesn't mean he's a bum. It doesn't mean he sucks. It doesn't mean if in three years he makes a crazy sack, you're going to come back and you can call me an idiot, all that stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, if we took, think about it this way. If we took one of those receivers, whichever one, whatever, JSN, Flowers, or um, Addison, right? Which isn't revisionist history, I think. That everyone was hoping for JSN. Let's be honest. When that pick came in, now it turns out maybe he was worse than the, than the three of them. But whatever the case may be, if we took one of those receivers, and I was just on this stream cutting up with the guys, and I just said, you know what, random thought, you know, Zay Flowers, that you know, hundred catch rookie season was kind of nice, but I don't know. Anyone ever think we should have taken Will McDonald? You you would never listen to anything I said about football again, right? <laughs> so so yeah, obviously. Um, and you can't judge a draft class after one year. It typically takes like three years, but make no mistake. NFL GMs armed with one year, with one year of NFL production. If they could go back and redo the drafts, the, the boards would be completely different. D Amarius Mims is going to be a first round pick, top 20 pick. Maybe he's got like eight starts in college. You're telling me 17 games in the NFL and GMs wouldn't rethink stuff. Oh yeah, they would. Oh yeah. It's always funny to me. Like, you can't redo a draft after one year. Yeah, Sauce Gardner wouldn't have gone higher after being an all-pro corner as a rookie. Spare me. Spare me. Come on. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, but yeah, man. So that's but that goes back to my rental thing. If the Jets extend Hassan Reddick, okay, then McDonald's gonna be in JFM's contract is not cuttable really the next two years. So that would leave when McDonald being a like 25 to 35 to max like 40% of the reps player for the first two to three years of a rookie deal. It's essentially a five-year contract and he was an older player when picked. 
yeah, that would just not be ideal res resource allocation. But I think if they rent Hassan Reddick, then the timeline really works out for McDonald to step into that like full time starting role by year three. So that kind of leads in that kind of leads into my rental theory as well to unleash Will McDonald in the following season. Like if Will McDonald ends up being a good player at a premium position, I think he's a good pick. If I could go back, if I could go back, I would take a receiver. That's all I'm saying. And if that makes me a McDonald hater or whatever, then you know, so be it. But Jets got us on Reddick. There are crap ton better at football. This roster is so talented. It almost, I can't believe how, how high my hopes are again for the season. I really thought, I'm like, you know what? No, not until, not until they're like, you know, six and two or something real tangible. But now nah, I'm bought in again, man. I'm bought in. It's undeniably an excellent, collection of talent they got going in 2024. And I was watching some stuff that people clipped up of Hassan Reddick last year, and it looks like he's still bringing the gas. What's going on, guys? Dakota says Reddick, Williams, Johnson, Kinlaw, JFM. Oh, yeah. Toes doesn't like that we kept Salah. Fat Spud says, no, we have JJQ, JFM, McDonald, Reddick, Clemens is okay. Solomon Thomas will be okay. We need to solidify the offensive line and safeties. Yeah, I wonder if they'll – I think they're going to add a veteran safety. I don't know. I don't think it'll be Simmons or Diggs, but I think they'll add a body there. What's up, Wild Wave? Jets mess, mess, mess. Hennessy's here. Just wait for Hawk to show up so you guys can argue about Zach Wilson. We'll save that for um about 45 minutes in is when we... Those of you... Because I could see on YouTube, a lot of people just watch the monologue, and then once they start going to the comments, they um they just drop off, uh, which that's fine. <laughs> Not everyone's got an hour, an hour out of their day to listen to me ramble about the Jets. So however much you listen, I appreciate it. But you guys miss our 45 minute tradition of Hawk of me mediating an argument between Hennessy and Hawk about Zach Wilson. We'll do it after the super. We'll do it when the, if the jets win the super bowl and I do a post game stream, which I will, unless I go to the event, which I feel like I would jinx it. I think I'm going to, I think if the jets go to the super bowl, I'm going to watch it in a dark cave by myself in silence with no food, friends, just nothing. Um, but in that stream, after 45 minutes of celebrating, we will argue about Zach Wilson. It's a tradition. We must do it. Super chat from Mumtaz. Moses is overrated. ESPN was applauding Baltimore for trading a guy they were going to cut. He gave up a team high not nine sacks. Really? Morgan Moses gave up nine sacks. We must draft offensive line and Huff will outplay Reddit. Crazy choice. I... It's possible Huff outplays Reddick. I don't. Well, dude, I just. I mean, you know, the whole um, the intro was about the the comparison between the two. I don't. I wouldn't call it a crazy choice. Let me double check that Moses. Morgan Moses. Nine sacks. I feel like I would have known that if that was the case. Let's trust but verify, Montez. Okay, I'm seeing here five sacks allowed. 24 pressures allowed, six penalties from Morgan Moses last year. So in the year before, he had five sacks again. Penalties are a little high. Him and Simpson both commit more penalties than you like. So I don't know why the Ravens would cut Morgan Moses because even his money is really good backup money. If they're going to draft a tackle, let's say they're going to draft a tackle at the end of the first round which is not like they're taking Joe Alt, you know? Who are they taking? Maybe they're taking, like, Tyler Guyton. Okay, it, Morgan Moses at 33 might be better than rookie Tyler Guyton for an all-in team. You know, it's not like pick 10 where the dude's got to start. The Ravens are at, what, pick 28? That dude can sit on the bench for one year. 
So I'm uh ESPN was a plot. Yeah, dude. You got Morgan Moses who, okay, let's say he's a below average starting right tackle. Okay, I have I have not, in full disclosure, I have not watched um Morgan Moses' 2023 film. I watched Simpsons. I like Simpsons. Tyron Smith, I'm not going to bother because we know he's a dude if he's on the field. So I'll check out Morgan Moses' film. Or at the very least, I'll watch like Joe Blewett's review if I'm feeling lazy. Uh, I- I'm going to say the worst case scenario, he was a below average starting right tackle. Worst case. Okay, you got him for four million and negligent or five million and neg- negligible um draft capital. That's still a significant upgrade and still good value in this wide receiver or um offensive line market. So I disagree on the Morgus thing, Morgan Moses thing, man. Crazy decision, Huff versus Reddick. I think the Jets uh, my th- I think the Jets offered Bryce off a contract, but it was too late because of the reasons I already stated, I think they were just one step behind of realizing quite of what they had in Huff. Like, come on, let's, let's be real. Do we think, cause when he started playing more snaps, when he started playing half the snaps over half the snaps from week, I think it was week four or five and on whatever the chiefs game was forward. He played 52 and a half percent of the snaps. Same as JFM who we know they had no problem paying. So if Huff is situational, well then so is JFM because Okay, you're playing the same amount of snaps. I know Bryce Huff, you're trying to lean more into pass rush where JFM, you'll play him at both, but he's on the field as much. So do we really think the Jets were like, not yet, he's not ready, hold it, hold the line, situational, situational, and go. And they like timed it, and, it just, and like before that, if they tried it, it would have been, no, they probably could have done it in 2022 and he would have balled out. So obviously Huff is going to feel a type of way about that. But once Huff is gone, dude, you got Hassan effing Reddick. Like, let's not let's not misunderstand who Hassan Reddick is. <coughs> this is a bad dude. Let's okay. I got Morgan Moses up here. Let me get on uh, Hassan Reddick. Let's get into my PFF Premium. I'll pay the seven bucks so you guys don't have to. Let's get the goodies. All right, Hassan Reddick, twenty twenty three. Tackles, who cares? Blah, blah, blah. Stops, 24. Sacks, 13. Pressures, 67. Um, Yeah, on a, you know what? I, I, they don't have this. The, here's the number I want to find. Because on a rep for rep basis, Bryce Huff was a more efficient pass rusher than Hassan Reddick last year. Quite, sig- actually, p- pretty significantly so. Um, Now, obviously, Heretic is a better run defender. I want to see the double team rates because Huff was rarely doubled. I wonder, um, and I don't want to spend a bunch of time live like Googling stuff and PFF. Come on, pay eight bucks, you know, give me your double team rate. Hassan Reddick double team rate. That's what I would be interested in. Um, because that's obviously a huge difference as well. Oh, okay. Well. According to Next Gen, Hassan Reddick was double. Oh, okay, Huff was actually double teamed a little more than I thought. Hassan Reddick double teamed sixteen percent of the snaps. Bryce Huff double teamed fifteen percent. So very similar. Like I'll tell you what, Mom Taz, you're telling me it's third down and eight and eight. Third down and eight, and I got to get off the field. And it, the year is next year, 2024, this upcoming season. And I got either Bryce Huff's hand in the dirt or Hassan Reddick to go get a win on that third and get off the field. I'm actually taking Huff. I'm taking Huff. And the, and the information, the, the, the analytics back that up. But in terms of overall value of a football player, with the information right now, I'm taking Reddick at least for this year. Now, how he ages and all that, we'll see. But I, I do think if we're just viewing it as Reddick for Huff, I think the Jets did get better in 2024. And if they got worse, I'd tell you. Right, because you know, you know the guys I haven't liked that we've added that I are that I argued with for all off seasons, and I'm a hater and all that. So maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not in the business of being a homer. If I thought Hassan Reddick was like you know a downgrade, do do do. Thank you for the super chat, though, Mums has appreciate it, brother. It's been a minute. How many players in our defense were top twenty? Top. T- 
oh, dude, there's, you know, it's interesting. Um, Will Parkinson of the Badlands, he he tweeted out like, um, uh, who are your top 10 players in the Jets? It's kind of hard to do. And of course, I'm like, nah, this will be easy. And I'm like, shoot. Like I did, I did a number 10 and I was like, wait a minute. Michael Carter's not on this list. Oh, that's not good. Then I did number 10 and I'm like, wait, ABT is not on this list. That can't be right. Then I did a number 10. I'm like, wait, DJ Reed's not on here. Then I'm like, wait. CJ Mosley is not, not on here. It's crazy because if you go through, and uh, I know you asked about the defense, but if you look at like, okay, Sauce, Quinnen, Brees, Rogers, Garrett, ABT, Tyron Smith, where do you rank him? Hassan Reddick, where do you rank him? Jermaine, where do you? <sighs> it's crazy, man. It's crazy. You know, in years past, like, it's wild, man. In years past, like Brandon Eccles would be our number one corner. Um, like Javon Kinlaw, we'd be like, all right, Javon Kinlaw is going to, you know, be second in the team in sacks. <laughs> we didn't have anybody like Reddick or Jermaine. The, the Jets could make the argument they have the best defensive line in the league. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but you can make the argument. They can make the argument they have the best linebacking duo in the league. They Each of their starting linebackers have made a all-pro in the past two years, and they can make an argument they have the best corner uh, situation. Safeties, no, not, not, not quite there. Brad John says, would you bring back Lakin as a backup for one to two? Oh, for one to two million? Sure. I don't know if he would do that. He might just retire. You know, I wonder if um as I understand it, his family stayed in the Bay Area. And then he was just kind of hanging out, even though he signed a three year deal. You know, I know he he they the family they lost the daughter. It's unimaginable. Um but uh, so I don't know if he's just hanging out and is only going to maybe take work in California if people call or just hang it up. You know, if a guy, if a dude has that much money, yeah, are you going to go through training camp and, and maybe play a couple games, risk a concussion for an extra couple million? I don't know. Guys do it. But yeah, he's still as a backup. Fine. Um, But I don't think that would happen. I wouldn't be super against it. See, I, I I don't necessarily agree that the Jets didn't think Huff was a three-down lineman. I think they thought he was close to it. Because, again, they played him 52.5% of the snaps after week four, and his early round, early down play percentage increased massively. They still tried to play, they still tried to play him situationally, but they do that with JFM, where they try to get him out there on early downs as an edge and then kick him inside for for um, pass, passing situations. So I think like we can call it situational. We can call it third down. Look, th I think the Jets realize this dude should be a staple of our rotation, and he should play as much as a lot of these other guys, as much as JFM, you know, not far behind JJ. Right? Even Quinn and they play in like this, the 60, 65% of the snaps. So I just think they realized it a little bit too late. You know, and I think Huff had already made up his mind. I think Huff already made up his mind that he was going to be gone. The Jets see something going with Donald that they didn't see in Huff. Yeah, yeah. You don't take it. You don't take a dude top fifteen if you don't think he could be an every down player, right? Well, McDonald is better than Bryce Huff. Um. 
I would just bet against that just because I would I would bet against that for any unknown commodity, pretty much. Unless you're a Miles Garrett level prospect, I would bet against you know a, a good even a good edge prospect being better than Bryce Huff, just just out of probability. And I haven't seen enough of Will McDonald at the pro level to change my mind. Obviously, I hope Will McDonald is better than Bryce Huff because Bryce Huff is no longer employed employed by the Jets. So I wish him, I wish him, I wish him well as a person, but I'm not really rooting for Bryce Huff. I don't really do that, to be honest. I don't have guys I root for. Even like Sam, like I like Sam. And that's like, a, oh, I hope he gets his chance. And he goes, I don't really, I don't really root for Sam. I loved Sam. I would have been, I would have been a Sam truther. That's the funny thing. People say, oh yeah, just like you would have said with Sam or Gino. No, I thought those guys could play. I just think Zach Wilson is terrible. I have a different opinion on every player. But um, once once they're gone. I have no allegiance. Don't care. Wish your family well. I hope you don't get injured, but I don't wish you success. If you're not on the Jets, I really don't. <laughs> I don't care. Reddick is better than Huff. Uh, yeah, I I would have to agree with that right now. It's it's tough to make a case that Bryce Huff is a more valuable football player than Hassan Reddick in the year 2024. Now the Eagles are making that bet. I don't really get the the um trade from Philly's perspective, honestly. It seemed like a salary dump because they would have got a comp pick anyway. And Will's good. Will Will's nice, man. Will's smooth. Honestly, you know what? I <laughs> I'm not the first person to say it, and it's just funny that he's here now. I really think Will McDonald, like Hassan Reddick is the perfect person for Will McDonald to, because I am I have a this clip up of, of a Hassan Reddick rep right now I'm watching, that ball dinger. And it's like, I'm not saying Will McDonald is going to, be going to be Hassan Reddick, but I think if Will McDonald hits his ceiling, Hassan Reddick is such a good comp, if he hits. Because that combination of, uh, you're under your 245. You're, you're kind of wiry, strong, almost built like a basketball player. But they both have freakish long arms. Like Asan Reddick is not a tall dude. I think he's like 6'1. But Asan Reddick probably has like a 6'9 wingspan. And the way they move, like when it is, man. That, that's, that's the plan, right? You have Asan for a year and then McDonald steps in. And they probably draft another first round edge after that. They just keep it going. They trade for Bryce Huff back. Wildwave says JFM is not worth his contract. The Jets were never going to extend Huff during the season. I would say JFM is is slightly overpaid. Um, good. I, I think you know on the open market he'd probably get closer to like eleven. 12 million as opposed to the 14, 15 he's making. So nothing crazy. It's not like, oh my gosh, we got to cut JFM. His contract is nuts. He's a good player. He's um he's very streaky though. I wonder how he factors into the long term plan of the team because he's still only like 27 years old. I always bring up safety and you hate me for it. I think that's a little bit of an overreaction. But now we have to shift our focus to free agency. To the last position group of need. Change my mind. Are you are you thinking of me? I, I maybe I'm misremembering something, but about us, or at least maybe you brought up a specific player I didn't like. But no, I've definitely been open to um the Jets need to improve the safety room for sure, for sure, man. Uh, swing tackle, running back to safety. You know, safety is one of the few spots where if you sign somebody big that, or if you drafted someone early, like even if you drafted a safety at like 72, maybe they could they could probably come in and compete to start. Beckham to Buffalo, did that did that happen? I saw he was visiting Miami, he signed with the Bills. Mm, I'm not seeing that. I feel like that would be trending. But Uh 
Let me catch up in the chat here. Who's the Kyle Brady of the first round? Man, I haven't done enough draft homework to know. Um, who's a pl- who's a player I'm lower on than most? Hmm. I don't know, man. I'm not gonna pretend to know anything about the quarterbacks. That's such, that's such a crapshoot, man. <clears throat> But I think the J.J. McCarthy stuff is real, not in terms of if he's going to be good. I have no idea, but I do think he will be a highly drafted quarterback. I don't think it's like Will Levis where he falls. AFC East is within our reach. Yeah. How could you say it's not? Obviously, health is a caveat. It is with any team. Now, the Jets have some bigger health variables than most teams. Um, But the roster speaks for itself, man. Come on. Let's... Let's be real. Can Reddick drop into coverage? I'm sure he's got the athleticism and the length to do it if we needed him to. I'm sure Rex Ryan would have him doing some weird amoeba stuff, but nah, dude, he's going to have his hands in the dirt and he's going to go get it. Quan was a played a completely different position. Quan was a an off ball uh, linebacker. I want to give you a dislike with your header. Oh, the question, did the Jets make a mistake? Yeah, I wrote it like that so you guys will come in here. <laughs> and I and my answer to the question was no, right off the top. Come on now. Should I change it and say why the Jets didn't make a mistake? Mm-mm. I want the clicks. Yeah, I don't want to talk to myself. I want you guys to come hang out. So I make up a nice little thumbnail. Every person who makes content wants clicks. Now, I'm not going to lie to get clicks. That's clickbait. I see that. I see stuff where channels, and I don't even know how they don't get banned. They'll say like a move happened that didn't happen yet. They'll say like the Jets got, um, you know, whatever. The Jets got Odell Beckham. It's like, no, that, that didn't even happen. How can you? But tweets their own. All right. What's going on? Oh, no. No. <laughs> no, you bastards. It's not even 45 minutes in yet. Oh, my God. <sighs> <laughs> Zach Wilson. Jets gang, be happy. We look at this roster, man. We got Hassan Reddick lining up next to Quinn and Williams and Jermaine Johnson and JFM. And you're in here arguing about quarterback three who's not going to be on the roster by the time we play our first game. Jets gang. I want to know, are you are you related to Zach Wilson? I, I I feel like there's a non-zero chance some of the people like the BYU fan guy that used to be really crazy. He made like six accounts. I feel like that was a Zach Wilson relative. Jaden Daniels be a bust. Yeah. You think so? You see that picture of his elbow? The dude's elbow has like a it's like a oh it's, I don't even know how to describe it. What about running back? The free agent running back, like Ezekiel Elliott is the best running back available. So that kind of tells you where the market's at. J.K. Dobbins is freaking incredibly talented and a great skill set, but he's so injured. He's so injured. Uh, 
Uh, maybe Izzy could be running back too. Cream Hunt or Zeke? Yeah, fine. I'm fine with either of those. You know, hopefully Izzy would beat them out and he'd maybe running back three. Polycar says people need to pump the brakes on a roster being top whatever. Well, I said top eight. Top eight isn't that crazy. Who's better? Who's better? Kansas City. Okay. San Francisco. Baltimore. Um, I mean, I guess you'd have to say Detroit. They were in the. Are is Detroit better though? Am I crazy? Am I crazy for not being positive? The Detroit Lions are more talented than the Jets. Probably, I'm probably crazy. I don't know. I think I don't think top eight is that insane. Now we don't have a top eight coaching staff, and we don't have a top eight turf. We don't have top eight luck, so I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, wide receiver, wide receiver is um could get dicey pretty pretty quickly. But I'm assuming offense. I'm hoping offensive line and receiver are the first two picks, whatever order you want to go in, whatever. Gary Wilson changed numbers. Yeah, he did that a while ago, right? With um. Uh, with the punter. <laughs> All right. I got to ignore the Zach Wilson stuff. I, I feed into it too much. Feed into it. The Jets gang, has your opinion at least, have you at least had a, like a realization that not only are like certain Jet fans or content creators, Zach Wilson haters, but the rest of the entire NFL and the other 31 GMs. <laughs> that, has that, has that like had a light bulb moment to any, any of the, the Zach crew of like, you know what? No one wants to trade a, a broken Android charger for this kid. All right. Red John says, in your opinion, what's left to do? What do you want the Jets to do at 10? Um, I think if they, if they could sign a veteran safety and a running back too. I'd like receiver depth, but that's a price. You're probably not going to sign Tyler Boyd or Corey Davis, right? But you can go ahead and peel off a couple million for a veteran safety and a veteran running back. And and a swing tackle. So I'm talking like three million bucks a piece there, nothing crazy. And then at number 10, I want them to take the best offensive player. And that's uh, and maybe that's a cop out. And maybe as I get we get closer to the draft and as um I get a chance to watch some more games of more players. And eventually I'll have to, eventually I will eventually I'll plant my flag uh, on one guy's one player over the others. I do have some players that prefer over others in, in terms of at their specific positions. I'm definitely lower on Olu Fashanu than most. I just see a lot of leaning and hit and, and just those dudes, his hips are like at his chest and then his torso is like this big. And it's just a lot. There's a lot of, the, struggling to get leverage in the run game. And strong bull rushers give him an issue. So I guess my hot take at offensive line is I like Latham better than Fashanu. Right? I mean, there's only so there's only so worked up you can get about someone's draft opinion. Because the funny thing is any random on the internet can just give a draft opinion and it can be correct over like some former pro who watched like dozens and dozens of film. It's funny, like I was going uh, back through uh, JT O'Sullivan, who does the QB school. Probably some of he probably does like the best just analysis of what he's talking about with quarterbacks. I have I have no idea what he's saying half the time, but it just you know I'm absorbing what I can. And um, he was talking about you know Justin Herbert and how he did not believe in Justin Herbert at all. And like some guy in the comments who was like, you're an idiot. You're a fraud. Herbert's going to be great. Like from his mama's basement. And that dude was correct. 
So that's the fun. That's the what makes the NFL draft fun is it the the randomness to it. So when people say like you know within reason, within reason, like if you say Malik Neighbors is going to suck, all right, like you know, come on. But you know, if you say if someone says I like Fuaga over Fontenot, and it's like whoa, it's like dude, who who knows? Like <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Zach beat the Eagles and Texans outright. That's what I'm saying. That's why someone should trade at minimum a second round pick. I wonder if maybe they didn't have the film of those games. You know what, Jets Gang and Taylor, if you could package up those games, those highlights, and send it to every NFL GM. And I'm sure by noon tomorrow, we'll have a first round pick for that dude. It's clearly a franchise quarterback. Connor says, is it? It's like Orlovsky said, we have one of the best rosters in the AFC, but it is written in pencil due to injuries. Yeah, I mean, you could say that for every team, but I do understand why it applies more to the Jets than other teams. But yeah, would I rather trade down or trade up? I would, if you could get one of those top receivers, one of neighbors or Harrison Jr., and it didn't cost you next year's first, I would rather do that. Zach isn't traded because of his contract. So hold on. We're past 45 minutes now. We could do it. <laughs> hold on, brother. Come on. Come on, man. Can we stop doing these like fourth grade arguments? Come on, dude. The dude's making five and a half million starting quarterbacks are going to be getting 50 million a year like good ones soon so if you if he's good like you say he is and if he had an offensive line he could ball out he could be top 10 quarterback he's gonna be steve young like someone at least one person brings up steve young every time i do a video about zach wilson i'll listen here young man i'll tell you a lesson about a guy i watch called steve young yeah everybody knows who steve young is dude but the reason why everyone brings up steve young is because there's only like one dude in the past 40 years that's been that bad and turned it around but why wouldn't an nfl gm take on five and a half million for the next steve young or even if he's the next jacoby Brissett, they would do it seriously a team would give a seventh round pick and five and a half million for a Jacoby Brissett level quarterback. So why aren't they doing it? Is it a conspiracy? Like, or here's the other part too. And then this will be the last part in Zach Wilson for the stream, because here, here's why this is pointless with the Jets gangs of the world. And I appreciate you hanging out. I'm sure you're a perfectly nice person. If I meet you in person, I'll shake your hand. We'll talk football. It's I'll buy you a beer. It's all good. I really have no ill will towards the Zach Wilson clan. <laughs> But if Zach Wilson goes and turns it around and becomes like a 10-year starter superstar, I will be bewildered. I will say, oh my gosh, I can't believe how wrong I was. It would, it would give me pause before I gave an opinion about like anything else for years. It would like shatter my worldview. I was like, oh, I can't believe I was that wrong about something. And the next time you gave a quarterback take, I'd be like, hey, it's Jets gang. He saw it on Zach Wilson, man. We got to listen to what that dude says. But the flip side, if Zach Wilson goes and does what 99% of quarterbacks who start their career with his statistical profile do, which is fizzle out of the league as like a backup, you guys will never admit it. You'll still just say, oh, coulda, woulda, shoulda, blah, 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 blah. So what's the point of arguing? You're not going to hold the L. <laughs> so, you know, it'll be like showing a globe to a flat earther. Here it is. Like they already made up their mind. They're not listening to any reason or evidence. All right. Now we can move on from Zach. We need a safety, says Zach. <laughs> Zach, Zachary Burner. That can't be a real name, is it? Is it Zach's Burner? We need a safety and one more weapon, some depth in different places. What kind of weapon you want? Yeah. I'm telling you, man, if they were able to get Bakhtiari on a cheap deal, I feel a lot more comfortable going and getting a playmaker at 10. That's for sure. I found out today that Boy Green is part Puerto Rican. I made him aware that you are as well. I did not know that about Boy Green. 
I could see it now. Fashano is your number one. Could be. I'm not going to be shocked if he um if he turns out to be the number one tackle. He's probably my third favorite tackle. Wait, you guys think Zach's going to be on the roster? All right, I got to stop. I got to stop. He's not going to be on the team. He's not going to be on the team. Am I happy about getting Reddick over Clowney? Yes. Yes, because you could make the argument Clowney... Um, Clowney last year was an overall more impactful player than Hassan Reddick. You can make that argument just because Clowney was, dude, Clowney was good, man. Nine and a half sacks. He had more. So Hassan had like 13 sacks. The Clowney's nine and a half, but Clowney had more pressures, more hits, uh, more, uh, way better run defense. But Clowney is way more hot and cold. Hassan Reddick has shown you four years in a row, like, I'm going to get 12 plus sacks. I'm going to get 60 pressures. Where Clowney, it's like two sacks. Nine sacks, three sacks, eight sacks. I think one year recently he had zero sacks, and the next year he had like 10. So I would go with, and being that they're both a similar age, I would go, I would prefer Reddick to Clowney personally. If Zach was cut, he'd be on. Yeah, sure, he'd be a third string quarterback. But if five million is too much, man, you got you got to think about that. Five million, five million is prohibitive at quarterback. So these teams are telling you we don't even think he's a high end backup. It's his, in year four. That's not me telling you that. It's not. You're not arguing with me anymore. You got to take it up with the other thirty one GMs, man. All right, Jets gang, I'll hold you to that. How would I feel about Jamal Adams' return? Nah, he's done, man. Devontae Adams, that ship has sailed. Clowney had a higher pass rush win rate. Then Reddick. Yeah, no, Clowney was a beast last year, man. I just think Hassan Reddick is more consistent. Mike, what's up, brother, says, weapon at 10. Need to build offensive line in the later rounds. JD has done a great job so far. Reddick is full-time DE rusher. JD did his job. JD, I, I really like the Jets' free agency class. I really do. I think it's their best free agency class so far, in my opinion. Weapon at 10, so what? Odunze or Bowers, I think, are the only two weapons that would be reasonable to be draft at 10 Harrison and neighbors are not going to be there. And I think that other, the other wide receivers, like personally, <clears throat> Brian Thomas jr. Uh, I like a lot. I don't see him as a, a top 10 pick. That's why I lean offensive line being more likely because if Odunze is gone, like say Chicago takes Odunze, there's go there's going to be a, a, a good offensive line prospect there at 10. That's worth taking at 10. I don't know if there's going to be a receiver worth taking at 10 because I don't know if Odunze falls. But I don't have a problem with your philosophy.
You know what will happen is the Jets will make the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers will be hung over on ayahuasca from the night before. Tyrod Taylor will have to start. He'll dig the Jets into a, a three-touchdown deficit, and Zach Wilson will come in, in the second half and lead the Jets to a comeback victory. Didn't Lawson have a super high win rate? How'd that go? Well, it went, he got injured. Dude, Carl Lawson was a beast in 2020, but no, he, he had, he already had multiple season ending injuries in Cincinnati. And then he blew out his Achilles and, and then he hurt his back. And that was that. But dude, yeah, Carl Lawson, uh, he was a monster the year before the Jets signed him. I know he didn't have a ton of sacks, but he was, he was a beast. All right, let's not wish injuries on people. That's not cool. Radical play even better next to Quinnen. And yeah, I you can make the argument. I mean, Philly had a great defensive line too, but say the Jets are, are, are right up there, man. What team can we get to trade up? I wonder if the Raiders would trade up to jump. Cause I think Minnesota is going to shoot up and, and not make any bones about it, man. I think Minnesota is coming up into the top six. And they're not going to, they're not going to F around. Um, but maybe the Raiders, because maybe they want to jump the Broncos who are at 11. Um, because it goes, I think it goes Broncos, Vikings, Raiders, which all three teams could use a quarterback. But I think Minnesota's shooting up, man. But leave it there. Appreciate you guys hanging out. Talk to you tomorrow. Go Jets.